Hi, this is Dr. Toby Momo, your host on Health and Wellness. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. Don't touch that dial. We have a great show with on the show today. Our guest is Dr. Abiye Eo. He's a microbiologist at the Mississippi Department of Health. And um, he's moved transition from Canada to America. Initially trained in Nigeria, master's, bachelor's level, went on to do a PhD in Canada, and then is now currently working at the Mississippi Department of Health. And he's been sharing with us the role microbiologists have to play in the field of medicine. It's been a great discussion. I've learned a lot. I'm sure you've learned a lot as well. We're going to talk today about some other things that have happened in his life. The transition from Canada to America, his family, his marriage, and other things that are also secondary to his coming to the United States. So, Dr. E, it's a pleasure to have you on the show once again. Thank you so much. Thank what you, an Dr. honor Mama. to have you here with us. So tell me, um, what, what, when you finish your program, five years is a long time. You invested five years of your life in Canada. Why make the move to the United States? Good question. The, the reason I moved to the United States was because of my wife. Mm. Okay, so what happens is uh, when, when you get married to somebody outside of either the U.S. or Canada, it means you have to sponsor that individual right. to come join you. Mm -hmm. And so I started out, once we got married, I started out sponsoring her. So you were a student, PhD student when no, you got No, I, I was already done with my... Oh, so you were working in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was working. Um, well, you know, when you do a PhD, right. depending on the track you want to follow, mm -hmm. you could top that up with, say, some postdoctoral experience, right. which... I did, okay. you know. So I did. I did some postdoc at the University of uh, British Columbia. Okay. Um, when I was there, I developed um, in association with some other individuals um, DNA-based diagnostics, oh. you know, for acquired. Uh, what is it? Hospital acquired pneumonia or something? Oh wow, that's a big deal right now. A very hot yeah. topic, yeah. So we use uh, the procalcitonin, mm. but that's bacteria. But yeah, okay. So, so I believe um, what happened was I had put in the application for my wife, you know, and it was taking a long, long time. And then, of course, she was also getting desperate. So I said, okay, what do I do? And I said, okay, let me start looking to the U.S. Because then I, um, I had already um, gotten my Canadian permit. Because okay. when I finished, actually, uh, let me step back a bit. When I finished, I left Canada, okay. came to the U.S., for a postdoctoral work at the University of uh, Alabama at Birmingham. So I was, it was when I was at Birmingham, Alabama, that I decided, okay, it's, um, it may be a good time to apply to go to Canada because I'm not sure what, um, what's waiting, awaiting me in Nigeria. Because uh, before now, I was on study leave okay. so my job in Nigeria was still there mm -hmm. so I came to um, UAB in uh, Birmingham mm -hmm. for for a year and then right after I applied I was uh, um, given a Canadian residency so which meant I had to pack my bags and go back to Canada wow. so I went back to Canada Stayed in Canada for about three years, became a Canadian citizen, and then um, I, I think I got married and tried to sponsor my wife. So it was taking forever. Wow. You know, so that was what What was her background in Nigeria, medical, I mean, professionally? That's pretty... Oh, really? It's kind of pretty <laughs> strange, like divergent, you okay. know. 
she was an accountant oh. in Nigeria. Okay. And uh, coming down here, it's a, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. But so I moved down here, and then, you know, I moved down. It didn't take like two, three months. She joined me. So, so you that. You moved down to Mississippi. Yeah, I moved down okay. to Mississippi, uh, uh, then uh, the, the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Okay. That's where you got a job. Yeah, that was the... where I was. And then they, my move to Mississippi was more like, you know, they had this opening. They wanted somebody to head um, a lab that does mainly molecular stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And that's kind of, uh, because if you look at my CV, you would find that I actually did work in the department of psychiatry, okay? Oh. And somebody will be asking, what's a microbiologist doing in oh. that department? But as I explained earlier, the, 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 the line between the sciences is kind of blood right. now that oh. everything is kind of inter intertwined. Inter intertwined, you know? So because my training at the PhD level gave me a lot of expertise in working with DNA. Right. So DNA is DNA, whether it's in plants, it's in bacteria, it's mm. in humans, you know, oh. so you can pretty much work it up. And this was in the early 2000s? Yeah, that was, I, that I remember I came down here, I started precisely March 18th, 2003, was oh. when I, uh, came to um, assume my position at the, the University of Mississippi Medical Center. And so uh, my wife came to join me and then we, we started, you know. So in 2004, we had our first son. Okay. And then uh, 2006, another son. And then 2009, yet another song. Okay. So I have uh, three, boys. <laughs> three, three boys. And uh, uh. incidentally, we did, uh, we were guidance to a girl. A daughter, right? Yeah, that's uh, about nine years old. So the boys are teenagers, kind of? Um, I would say maybe one of them. Okay, okay. The other one is almost, almost. there. <laughs> yeah. So you now move from UM, University of Mississippi Medical Center to the Department to of the Health? To the Department of Health. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, that's what was the reason? Just a different... Um, you know... So obviously they sponsored your green card, right? Or how did you do that? No, they didn't sponsor oh. my... They didn't sponsor my green card. And that's uh, one other thing I like about America is that if you can do something, mm. they allow you to do to do it, you know, because I know um, the other thing was, okay, you're working here, you can't just work forever without having a stay. So I looked at, and because I'm from a research, mainly research background, uh, I just tell myself I can do mm. anything, you know. So, <laughs> so long as it doesn't need some form of certification, you know. Right. So I looked at the the application for sponsorship and all that stuff. Uh, the, the UMC at that time was making it difficult, right. you know. So. You could do it on your own. They'll help you, right? Oh. But they're not willing okay. to throw their weight behind you. So you were like on an immigrant visa yeah. when you started. When wow. I started, I had a H-1B visa. Oh, wow. yeah. And that was based on the fact that I came in from Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. So um, what did I do? I looked up everything, and then I said, you know what? So they had different categories. I think they call it E1B, mm -hmm. which is uh, somebody with extraordinary ability. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, what you need to prove to them is that without you, 
the United States will not be. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How much research you've done? What yeah, your so contributions to contributions your field? Contributions to your field, the papers you've published. You know, so I had, I had all that in my favor. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I had uh, co-workers who were willing to write something for you, and then I put. Uh, like I said, I haven't done research. It was easy for me to put all those things together, and I had a, a pile this high. Shipped it off, and you know, in no time, it was approved. Oh wow! You know, and then of course I had I had colleagues or friends who you know, um, a particular colleague of mine. She actually paid a lawyer ten thousand right, dollars yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, I don't have that money. So. <laughs> and the good thing was your wife could now apply for nursing school. Or yeah. So my wife's story is kind of a different thing in the sense that when she first came, she looked for a job in accounting. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it wasn't coming forth. And so she, she got tired and she wanted to at least do something. So... An opening came out from the state uh, hospital. Wow. So they had an opening for a mental health technician. So mental health tech, you probably you don't need any, just Post get out of high school mm -hmm. and, you know, because all they did was maybe help the patients with medicines mm -hmm. when it's time for them to take their pills, you know, they, they, they help them out. And so she did that for a while. And um, after a while, she's like, you know, I'm beginning to like this thing. I'm enjoying okay. it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, that's what I tell people, that money is good, mm -hmm. okay? But to me, money doesn't answer everything. everything. So to, for me, passion trumps money, mm -hmm. you know, so. You got to love what you're going exactly. into. Exactly. You, you got to, because I don't want to go to work. I want to go to work happy mm -hmm. and come back happy. I don't want to go to work, get up in the morning, oh my God, I have to go to this place again. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, but the money is good, so. I kind of psych myself up, and because of the money, I say, okay, grudgingly, I get up and then um, go to work. Mm -hmm. But you can't go through that year in, year yeah. out. Drug so you got to enjoy what, what you do. Doing. You know, and hopefully, whatever you're doing would put food on the table. Hopefully, yeah. You know? <laughs> so... So, so she, she decided she wanted to go to nursing school and um, gave her my blessing. And of course, as a microbiologist, it means that uh, you're dealing with uh, somebody who's never been in a yeah, science, science, you know, so, so it was so you like... you had to help her a little exactly, bit. Exactly. With biology. And with the biology. <laughs> but I think she's a, she's a pretty smart person, too, okay. because uh, it, it, it's kind of funny that somebody who never had a science background came in and was trouncing people. Okay. You know? <laughs> so, Tells you about determination. Yep. So I was asking you earlier on, I said, what... You met your wife through a friend or family member? Yeah, through my sister. Okay. So obviously you had made some interactions before she came over, right? Okay. I mean, that's what happens a lot today. A lot of people meet over the internet. A lot mm. of people meet through other people. So what has been your experience? It's been, let's say, 12, 15, no, 20, almost? No, yeah, 18. We it's uh, seventeen, maybe. more than that. I think we got we got married the uh, August thirtieth, two thousand and one. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's about uh, eight, eighteen. Eighteen. Years. Eighteen plus. So what what I my advice for people is this that um, you don't you don't run into you don't run into marriage. Mm -hmm. You just 
let it happen you know uh, a lot of i mean if i wanted if i had wanted to get married a long time ago to a canadian to or... a canadian <laughs> and that's the, the other thing that uh, comes to mind right. and uh, where my christian beliefs mm -hmm. actually does play a big role mm -hmm. because a lot of people would marry somebody and at the back of their mind knowing that this marriage isn't going anywhere. You're just doing it because you want a stay. A paper or yeah. financial uh, incentive. I ran into stuff like that, but you know, it never moved me. Even in the 2000s, it was still, it was very prevalent then. Yeah, I mean, I had, uh, I, this was actually a fellow Nigerian who came to me and she was like, you know, if you marry, I'm Canadian and all that, if you marry me, you would automatically become a Canadian. <laughs> and this is, she's a Christian, right. okay? So I looked at that and I said, you know what, that's not me. Right. I mean, if, if I had it for you, right. that would be... A di that oh my would be, goodness, she must have been not very ha happy. <laughs> well, I think at the end of the day, I, I believe, you know, the, the truth always prevails mm -hmm. because right. today we're friends. Exactly. And uh, because I stood on... On a principle, you right. Know, so oh, you're right. It's bad to... Truth always finishes a marathon. Lies will fall out before you get there. Yeah. And it's, I think it's a big lesson. And um, obviously you waited for the one that God had for you. Wow, that's impressive. And uh, I mean, he said you waited for the one that God has for you. Okay, so one other thing you have to understand that marriage is not a bed of roses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, Yes, when you meet at first, you know, there's all the euphoria and everything. But like, um, if, if they've never told you, all that will die down at some point. <laughs> and when that dies down, now you are face to face with reality. With reality. <laughs> and that's when we know if you are truly made for marriage, right. you know. So you could stay married for the first two, three years. That's probably the honeymoon phase and mm. all that, and you're enjoying it, you know, and then things start happening. So I take it that, you know, marriage is a covenant right. between two people. And That's how the Bible describes yeah, it. Yeah, once right. you've made that covenant, to me, the way I see it, it doesn't matter whether you don't feel like it, mm -hmm. you know. Loving somebody, to me, is you, it's a decision it's a that decision, you, right. it's not a feely, feely thing, right. you know. So you, you have to make concerted effort. And it's not dependent on the, the other party's behavior. No. It's a covenant that you have made. I'm going to love you irrespective of how you treat me and behave exactly so, you know so that's how jesus loved us and the bible says love one another as christ has loved you yeah mm -hmm. and i think one one pastor put it succinctly that uh, he's never seen that a man who beats up on his wife needs to have his head examined mm -hmm. because it's like you're beating up on yourself, on yourself. right right you know, so if you don't understand it, because when you get married, then the two have become one. one. Mm -hmm. So when you're one and then you're beating up on her, then it's like beating up on your, on yourself, you know. Mm. So you have three kids and obviously taking care of another daughter, three sons and one daughter. So they're big children now. How has that because a lot of people use that as an excuse that, oh, my marriage fell apart because I had children, no time to spend with each other. It has put a wedge in our relationship. We don't talk. We're always running after the kids, going to high school sports and dramas and ballet. And so tell me, I mean, 
I still have very young kids. So does that actually make a difference, having children in your relationship with your spouse? I mean, for me, I believe that uh, you have to make time for mm -hmm. everything. Kids, yes, I mean, the Bible says that the uh, children are a blessing mm -hmm. from, uh, from God, you know. So you, but they don't have to run your life for you. Mm -hmm. So you, you, have to, you have to be able to put things in perspective, you know. So I, I have time for my wife. We have time with the kids, you know. So it's really not that everything revolves around the kids. Like some people want to, mm. want to make it, you know. So as uh, married people, you ought to make time for yourselves, you know, irrespective of whether. And at this point, sometimes, you know, we, the kids are kind of big enough that we can leave them at home sometimes, go do whatever we need to do, you know. There are times uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say, okay, we're going, to, we're going out for two, three hours, and then we, we come back, you know. So I don't see... Any reason? I mean, it's it's a daunting task, especially if they are very little. Right. You know, at, at this stage, they're no more at that stage where I have to do everything for them. You know, and so life itself is a phase. You know, so you go through life and you get to the point where things start getting a lot easier. Yeah. So once if you can stay put, you in marriage you don't get up and leave once things get tough. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be the time you see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not always bleak. Mm -hmm. So there are periods of trials, but there's also periods where there's bliss. You know, and so 18 years is a long time. My viewers would like to know what would you do differently if you were to you know, get married, raise a family again, would there be anything you would say, I think I'll do this differently, I'll send my kids to this school, I'll live in this neighborhood, I'll not take this job out, you know, is there anything in your life, I don't know how old you are, but 18 years is a long time, mm. so what have you learned from the 18 years of marriage and raising three young men? Uh, there's this... Uh computer acronym, I think it's, it says Wheezy Wig. What you see is what you get, okay. you know. Uh, put another way, I believe, you know, I let God kind of be the ruler over my life. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm in tune with God, right. under his will, when things unfold, I'm able to handle them, you know. So I don't think I'm going to do things any differently because once you hand over everything to God, mm -hmm. then he directs your path. So you'll still come to Mississippi, you'll still move to Canada, <laughs> you'll still move to the U.S. I, you know you'll what? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you can't change all that, but, you know. Yeah, and uh, I, I believe, like, some people, people call you and they say, hey, where are you? I say, I'm in Mississippi. And they're like, how in the world did you end up in Mississippi <laughs> of all places? All right. So my uh, advice to those people is I ask them, okay, so you think we don't have a Walmart here? <laughs> or we don't have a Belks? Or we don't have JC Penny? <laughs> I mean, all the things that you think you enjoy wherever you are in New York or whatever. Right. I mean, look at the real estate in New York. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't give anything to go live there. Mm -hmm. But some people will, you know. So at, uh, my philosophy in life is um, if you're happy where you are, just stay, stay there. there. <laughs>
you know, you don't have to keep up with the Joneses to make sure you're, you're making it in life, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. So that's been a, it's been a roller coaster. And um, in terms of raising teenagers in particular, before our show ends, anything you want to tell us in terms of nuggets? In I, I, you have I think, one teenager. I think, I think uh, one thing I have learned is that uh, you have to mark them closely. Okay. You, you, you have to be around their business without looking like you are intruding, but kind of try to know everything that's happening to this individual. Because teenager, sometimes a teenager just thinks he can go on in life and whatever he does doesn't have any retributions to oh. his life. So I always remind my teenager that, look, whatever I'm doing right now, I'm not doing it so you'll turn around to take care of me, you know, that God willing, I know I'll be fine. You'll be. <laughs> but what I'm doing is in your interest. interest right. And uh, what I tell them most times is listen to your parents. Mm. Your, your mother, your father may not have gone to school. They may not have been within the four walls of a, a, a school. But the life lessons mm. they've learned is more than, more. more than all the university you have attended. Thank you so much, Dr. Iyo. He's been pouring out his heart on family, on friendship, on a lot of things with microbiology. We're going to end next week. We're talking about emergencies. What kind of emergencies are we expecting in America with the, from the microbiology sector? And I expect it to be a blast. He's going to share with us his insight in that respect. So join us next week. This is Dr. Toby telling you, Jesus is Lord. See you next week. God bless. God bless.